Alright, this is going to be take two of this video because the last one I did was far, far, far too long. Uh, I rambled on for almost ten minutes, so I'm hoping not to do that this time. Uh, here's the here's the plane so far. I taped it all up here like this. Looks pretty uh, disastrous at the moment. <laughs> so I'll show you guys what I did here. First thing I did is I primed it with Tamiya primer because I really don't trust the um, Matchbox plastic. I I had a feeling that with my acrylic paints that I was going to be using, that there's a very good chance that it would peel. I gave it a good coat of the Tamiya primer, and that worked really well. I can feel it; it's like really stuck on there. Um, so that's you know one bonus that's worked out so far. So the challenge has been to how to paint this crazy splinter camouflage that Swedish aircraft have. Um, I gotta say thanks to Rob at Basic Modeling. Uh, Rob is Swedish and he has uh, much more uh, knowledge of Swedish aircraft than I do. So he's been able to assist me in all my tedious questions that I ask him about how these aircraft work and how they painted them and everything. So uh, thanks again Rob, I appreciate it uh, a lot, a lot more than you realize. Uh, so what I did is I painted it uh, green, flat green, XF5. It looked basically the same as the colors that I needed, so I went, oh, I'm going to use that. The other colors that I picked up are NATO green, and I've never tried this one before, NATO brown, so I'm excited about that, and NATO black. They look close. They look very close. I've noticed that the brown... Uh, is it's sometimes brown and sometimes it's a tan color. I'm gonna stick with the brown, just because they all match. So I don't know if my colors are accurate, but they're close. So that's what I'm gonna go for with this one. So the question became, how do you paint this thing? How do you mask it off? And that was my my challenge. And I did come up with a way how to do it. it took me a, it took me a couple days to figure out a good solution. Uh, I found these on the internet. And these are uh, templates for window masks that you can buy. Uh, you know, kind of like what you do for, you know, Edward makes them all the time. But these are for the whole model of the Vigan. And uh, they were really helpful for me. So I came up with a solution. I have, this, I have a whole bunch of uh, cardstock like this here. And what I did is I took the model and I placed it like underneath like this and I traced out what the wing looked like. Took that, went to the box art here, and I drew what every single piece looks like. So here's every single shape. I've colored it out on here. I take this uh, template here, I cut them out, whatever color I need. I put the tape down on here. I put my template on like this, and I just cut out my template and then uh, place it on the model. So that works really well. The only problem with it is it's very very tedious work and it takes forever to do but I got it down so I'm excited and happy about that. Um, for getting on the side of the fuselage and stuff here I had to go another step and figure out how to do that and the only way I could really figure out how to do it was to use this uh, tracing paper um, and what I would basically do is I'd put it down, you know, like this on the model. And I'd look, okay, here's the yellow spot here and the yellow spot here. And then I would kind of look on the box art and trace out what it, the shape was supposed to look like. Take this, put it onto the cardboard here and, or cardstock, cut that out. And then I would, I'd be set to go. It works. But it takes forever. It's incredibly, incredibly tedious work to do, and I'm, I'm happy I got this done, uh, as far as I, I, I have. Working on this yesterday, I was just geared to, to finish this thing. I started from right here, and I did all the way around just the side of the fuselage because I'd already done the, the wings and stuff like that. That took me two hours to do, so it's incredibly, incredibly tedious work to do. And that's the problem, is it just, it just takes forever, but it works. So now the next step is to paint on the NATO green. That's what I'm about to go do. Paint on the NATO green, 
wait for that to dry, you know, tonight, maybe even tomorrow night, really let it sink in. And then I'll start by cutting out all the, um, all the dark green complexions there. And mask those off and do the same process all over again. So you probably won't see anything till I get to the brown or the black. But uh, it, that's, that's what I'm doing. The other problem I had with it is, is this is another way that Rob was trying to, you know, help me with this, uh, help me understand this, I should say, is I'm, since I'm painting this one, Matchbox gives you a top view, a side view, and for the other side, they unfortunately only give you the black and white, and so I colored it in with pencil crayons to help me out here. And uh, it's a bit confusing to figure out where the lines go and stuff like that, but eventually I did figure it out and it is working. So, six minutes. This is way better than ten minutes, so I'm going to shut up while I'm ahead because, yeah, I beat my record. One last thing I want to say, uh, I, I have to mention, is I'm using Tamiya tape and this stuff, it's labeled under Tamiya tape, but it's not Tamiya tape. It's Kamoi tape. It's a much brighter yellow than this stuff. You can see that right there. And someone said in another video that it's the same stuff. It is not the same stuff. This stuff is more transparent. This stuff has much better tack to it than this stuff does. I put this stuff here on the plate because it's thicker, it's easier to use, but it doesn't have as much tack and it's really frustrating. So, you know, I got a 50-50 chance the pieces don't stick, but it's working out pretty well so far. I basically just keep my hands clean when I'm working on it. So, it works. It, it's good stuff, but, uh, yep, that's about it. So, I'm going to go mix up the paint and start airbrushing, and I'll see you guys whenever I get there. I don't know. Okay, so I just finished airbrushing the green on here, the NATO green, and, oh, that couldn't have gone worse unless I somehow dropped it. Um, what happened is, uh, something was caught in the, in the, airbrush first like a bit of dried paint or something was caught in there so I'm gonna give it a good cleaning again um, but the worst part is this uh, Kamoi tape uh, it has its adhesion once I'm not gonna use this anymore it lifted everywhere and I'm so 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 scared I'm almost considering checking it out and if it's bad uh, repainting the entire model green again and starting over because it just lifted like I, I pressed down all the edges and everything and as soon as the airbrush hit it it just lifted up and uh, yeah I tried to handle that as best I could but wow whoa, 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 that was that sucked that really really sucked so out with the Kamoi tape and uh, I'm just going to stick with this Tamiya tape, and all I'll do is, uh, you know, make layers of it, and uh, it'll work, again, it will work, but it's taking me back another step, you know, I'm back, I was back four steps by going so slow with getting this done, now I'm back, I feel like I'm back five steps, but I'll get there. So I'll just go like this, dip there, go like that, sit down. Line that up. And this is how I'm going to do the rest of the model. So it'll get there. It will get there. It's just taking a long time to do it, is all. So, yeah. This stuff is good for masking. Like, I'll probably use this for masking the the bottom section, you know, big areas and stuff like that. So it's still useful, but not useful for what I need it for right now. So that's about it. Anyways, I'm going to go back to, uh, yeah, I don't know, work or cry, I'll figure it out later. Um, I ran into a, a very 
very very sad problem however is um, a lot of the areas in here in the wing root um, happens to me so often I tried to avoid it it built up like sand pebbles in there and so what I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm researching right now um, wet uh, sanding and basically that was the advice a whole bunch of people gave me is, is you know they said go wet sand that area and uh, kind of but do it very very slowly very very lightly and so I've got some very very fine grit uh, I've got thousand and fifteen thousand, I think, or fifteen hundred. Sorry, not fifteen thousand. Fifteen hundred. And this stuff is like I can barely feel it, really. Um, where's the thousand grit? Yeah, here's the thousand grit, and it's not a lot of, not a lot to it. Uh, I usually use it for polishing sanded areas and stuff like that so I'll try I'll try this this should work I think I'm gonna practice on <laughs> on a sprue first and see what happens you know before I do anything uh, silly like that but for now is the unveiling Oop. it is so cold here today it's been raining 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 and just getting colder um, for the for the bottom, <clears throat> what I decided to do there is I'm just gonna reprime it because this primer, uh, when I looked at it, I was like, that's basically the exact same color as uh, as, as is on the box. And I looked at um, what is it, sky gray, and this was this priming color was still better uh, suited for it. So what I'm gonna do now is take these off. And then I'm going to, uh, I think, assemble all the rockets, or I guess these are missiles, and drop tank, and, and stuff like that. Because there's still work to be done on those. There's more taping to be done on those parts, so... Uh, let's see... This is my... crowning achievement, or failing moment all that work and I kind of calculated my hours of um, airbrushing this thing uh, or sorry masking and it's over eight hours for both models I would say I'd say even it feels like more but honestly, it's just eight hours plus, a little. I've never done that much masking before. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to tell this. Yeah, got all four colors there, just on the tail alone. Beautiful, not bad. I tried my best to you know, hide everything and make sure everything was was covered properly. I don't think I did it 100%. Um, don't exactly know where to pick up the tape here, are there? Come on, there we go. Uh, what I wanted to say was, um, my mom lived in in Sweden for a couple of years. And uh, she absolutely loves the place. She still brings brings the country up often. And uh, I, I was asking her about uh, translation of words and stuff like that for this project. And she told me a story that they were driving in this one uh, area, and uh, the the guy who was he was who was driving them. Uh, pointed out this, on the side of the road, these uh, trees, and the thing that was really odd about the, the trees was there were these squares in the, in the, in all the trees, this clear area of just a, just a square, and they told her 
that that was areas where the they kept the planes. Or they could just kind of take them off in a hurry and I guess no one would know uh, where they had uh, where they'd come from. Which is kind of cool. Oh boy. <laughs> this is this is crazy. I'm I'm looking at my work, you know, and I'm going, I can't believe I, you know, got all of that down properly. And it looks pretty cool for now. Uh, the last thing I gotta mention is I uh, I I did spray the NATO brown on it, and it looked terrible. It was. It was a nightmare. It was just, it was, well, I can't say it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare for this plane. It was a very dark um, brown color. It was almost a red brown. Uh, and in fact, next time I'm going to do something rusty, I'm going for that paint. Um, and because uh, it, it's, it's a brilliant color, but it, was, it looked nothing like this. And so the the brown on here I mixed a couple of paints together to make this brown and it's uh, it's not uh, when I look at it now it's not exact I thought it was pretty close um, but it's it's better than what I had uh, Tamiya doesn't make an exact color close to it so I mixed it up and I don't like mixing paints in small batches because, uh, you know, in case you need touch-ups or, you know, worst worst case scenario is you run out of paint when you're, uh, when you're building, or sorry, airbrushing, you don't have any because you mixed it and you've forgotten how to get that exact color. You might as well, you know, most times start all over, even when you have, you know, the recipe or formula down in your head exactly. I've had so many instances where it's like, you know, I probably, it probably worked better because I stirred it a little thicker or, or you know. Ah, come on. I put this tape around the corners there so it wouldn't, uh, so it wouldn't paint under. <laughs> it's, it's doing its job. It's, it's like, no, you're not getting under there either. This is really, really cool. And for my next project, I'm going to build the same kit, but in 144 scale. <laughs> Actually, I think if you really wanted to, you know, do something really bizarre for uh, a competition or something like that, to build to build this kit in the splinter camouflage for uh, one one forty fourth scale uh, I think that would definitely get people's attention uh, I'd kinda like to do it in a way but if I had uh, pre-cut masks first I would never ever do it like this again this was so much work but uh, not a lot of bleeding Um I was really worried about that, that um, uh, other tape, I forgot what it's called already. The other Tamiya tape that's not Tamiya tape. Um, I was really worried about that bleeding through, and it hasn't so far, but look at that. What do you think? It's not perfect. I can definitely see some areas that need touch-ups, but only a few. Like right here, it needs a little bit of black in there, or green. Um, but again, it's not a it's not a lot, and kind of in here too. I might even just leave it because you don't really. I don't know if you really see it or not. I'm not gonna airbrush it. That would all be done by hand with a, uh, a incredibly tiny paintbrush that I, that I bought a while ago. So anyways, I'm going to shut up right now, and I'm going to 
go ahead and, and uh, clean the rest of this off and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's uh, all done but this is I don't know what do you guys think uh, I'm saying this asking future you this there's still there's still a lot of work to be done on it though like this is just it's very rough it feels like sandpaper and it's not that bad it just needs to be smoothed out a bit so like I said I've asked a couple people uh, who know way way more about um, this kind of stuff than I do you know they do cars and stuff like that and hopefully I'll get a response from the from the messages that I sent because I really love to uh, be able to have this make it look proper get rid of all that it also help the decals uh, lay down there better looks like I airbrushed a hair in there yeah, perfect. <laughs> what else? I'll find out as I go along. So anyways, yeah, like I said, I'm going to shut up now. But I don't want to turn off, I don't want to stop and turn off the camera. I, I'm too excited to see what it looks like. It's so much work. Anyways, yeah. Uh-huh. And, duh, this is pretty cool. Um, I can see a lot of areas where I need to just kind of clean it up just a little bit, tidy it up. Um, not bad, um, as far as it goes. And the good thing is, is if I thin the paint properly and I paint it on there with, uh, you know, the little brush, you know, you can't see them here on, on this, but I can definitely, you know, see them. And, and I take still pictures of it, you'll be able to, to tell what I'm, where the areas that I'm talking about. But, um, not bad. I'm actually really impressed with this. And, uh, kind of sit back and take a good look at it, what's going on and everything like that. And it, uh, it turned out pretty, pretty good from what I was, you know, concerned with. Um, now my, my big deal is is sanding it down and uh, getting all these bumps and stuff out of it. That's going to be my next research. I still have to unmask the other one, so I'm still not, you know, feeling 100% about it all yet. But I'm um, quite pleased with this. And yeah, next is to after after these are down, I'll coat it in uh, in future a couple times and tape it off again and mask or paint the uh, underside so yeah that's pretty cool not bad not as perfect as I had hoped but I was expecting to run into a couple problems so at least I was aware of that but uh, this is pretty pretty cool as far as I'm concerned so I'm gonna go get to work look at this big pile of tape here <laughs> This is eight hours <laughs> condensed into a little ball there. Anyways, see you guys in the next segment, whatever that will be. I'm not sure at this point.